So now, when dealing with the issue of truth, generally what's discussed is what is the definition of truth and whether it's absolute. Okay, so really these issues are, we can get to the through pretty simply. Truth is that which is in accordance with reality. If it doesn't accord with reality, it isn't true. That simple. And incidentally, one thing I mention to my kids every now and then when I hear them say to each other, oh, you lied. Like, oh, let me get in on this one here. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you know they lied? And it inevitably turns out, well, because what they said wasn't true. That's, but, but how do you know they're lying? See, someone could say something that isn't true. That doesn't mean they're lying. I mean, what if they're just wrong? Okay, so <laughs> a lie is just saying something that's not true when you know it isn't true. And so that's a difference there. <clears throat> and so truth must be in accordance to reality. And is truth absolute? Well, by definition, that is what truth is, okay? And so we could think of, let's imagine a time in the past of humanity, maybe everyone believed that the earth was a cube, okay? Was that true? No, it wasn't true. Was that their truth? It couldn't be their true truth because it wasn't true. Now, we could say it was something they believed to be true, we could say it was a belief they had or a concept they had or something they believed. You could use all kinds of terminology, but it wasn't their truth because it wasn't true and because truth has no ownership. Uh, the very concept of being absolute means that something is that which it is regardless. Whether you like it or not, whether you prefer it to be different or not, whether you disagree with it or not, it's irrelevant. It is that which it is regardless. That's absolute. So now my issue with truth is to go, uh, go beyond the definition and discussions about the absoluteness of truth. And let me give you an example by quoting, by the way, whoever I quote will be an atheist, just to get it over with. Matt De La Hunty states, I want to believe as many true things and as few false things as possible, okay? He even had it put on a t-shirt and he now he sells them. Now, my issue with Matt would not be to ask him to define truth and discuss whether it's absolute. My initial issue, we'll get right down to it, would be to say, you want to believe as many true things as people false things as possible? Why? I mean, why? Why is that an issue? I mean, who cares, right? I mean, coming from an atheistic evolutionary worldview as he does, that would be my primary issue to take up with him. And here's why. In a 1881 AD letter to William Graham, uh, Charles Darwin wrote about the horrid doubt always arises whether the convictions of a man's mind, which has been developed from the mind of lower animals, are or of any value or at all trustworthy. Would anyone trust in the, convic in the convictions of a monkey's mind? If there are any convictions in such a mind. Okay, so you, you get the point. Darwin recognized that if we have hazards to evolve by a goalless, by a blind, blind random choice process, what guarantee is that that our minds are capable of even ascertaining empirical truth. How could we think that our minds develop towards that end? Why should that be? And a lot of people have picked up on this idea, uh, C.S. Lewis, and more recently, Alvin Planting, uh, who uh, formulated an argument based on it. You see, because, uh, okay, so in an atheist universe, of course, there would be certain things that are true and certain things that aren't true. But is ascertaining truth, uh, what philosophers call part of the furniture of the universe? I mean, is there some kind of universal command, thou shalt ascertain empirical truth? I mean, it, it, where is that exactly in nature? Because if we evolve according to a Darwinian survival mechanism, right? Uh, it seems that if we could anthropomorphically claim that nature cares about anything, it cares about survival, it doesn't care about truth. 
Uh, and you can survive, oh, certainly by ascertaining empirical truth, but you can also survive by being completely deluded. And it doesn't matter as long as you survive. Okay, so that's the point. In fact, uh, the overwhelming majority of, of humanity, regardless of chronology, geography, or theology, have been theists. Okay? Which proves that theism is an incredibly successful Darwinian survival mechanism, even on that point of view. Uh, and, and so the majority of people on the planet today are Christians which obviously means Christianity is the most successful Darwinian survival mechanism. So there you have an atheist evolutionary argument for why atheists should convert to Christianity. <laughs> but you get the point. Um, the fact that atheists believe that theism came about due to a Darwinian survival mechanism shows that they believe you can be completely deluded and survive just fine. Thank you very much. So now, Conversely, in the Old Testament, truth is referenced 127 times, and in the New Testament, 110 times. And let's just cut to the bottom line with Jesus saying in John 14, I am the way, I am the truth and the life. No man comes up to me, uh, to the Father, but by me. Okay. So on the Judeo-Christian worldview, truth not only is, but truth is knowable. And Knowing truth is actually an imperative, okay, meaning a must do, like an important thing that we must do. And truth actually personified, literally personified in the person of Jesus. So on the one world view, yes, there's truth, but there's no imperative to ascertain it. You can if you want to, you don't have to. On the other one, it's absolutely essential, absolutely essential.